let us now look at the poem stone masons my father and me written by namdev dasal dalit literature in general and dasal's poems in particular embody the asymmetry of the core and the periphery the us and them the ours and theirs and question the nature of the marathi world picture and the periphery to which dalits are relegated dasal chooses the persona for his poems from the deepest darkest corners of this marginalized world in the poem that we are going to examine the persona is the child of a stone mason in this poem the poet depicts the art and work of stone masons they work hard and create beautiful figures in stones they chip away bits and pieces of stones to make them usable for various important structures unfortunately these people they die in misery they are oppressed by a caste ridden society vinay dharwadkar in dalit poetry in marathi writes that this poem is a violent rejection of the unjust past of caste based oppression the society glorifies the craft of the stone mason yet at the same time they marginalize him and his family denying them the basic human rights this politically charged poem first appeared in his first book of poems golpita dharwadkar further tells that the stone masons in the poem are the caste vadari an untouchable caste originally from the telugu speaking region bordering maharashtra on the east the vadaris break rocks and stones for a living often traveling around the country or migrating from region to region in large groups hiring out their services in the construction industry they include specialized stone masons but the majority of them including the women end up spending their lives manually splitting down stones into blocks gravel and chips for a variety of engineering and architectural purposes including use in mortar and paved roads it is back breaking unrewarding dehumanizing work often assigned in modern india and elsewhere to convicts sentenced to hard labor the poem examines how the child of a stone mason sees his father wear away after spending his entire life infusing these stones with vitality and dreams each stanza represents a different stage in the life of the speaker and his relationship with his father the speaker by repeating the word stone mason at the beginning of each paragraph stresses the role of the stone mason in deciding the destiny of those stones the first line represents the hollow praise given to these people and their craft by the hypocritical society the rest of the lines in the stanza disprove them with the real life experiences of his father the stone mason the poet detests any attempt at eulogizing or romanticizing the stone masons his father was a master of his craft and elevated the status of the stones but couldn't elevate his own life or that of his family he was poorly rewarded and died in agony the son has other plans as he warns people that any further mistreatment will be met with a strong reaction as stones can be used to break heads 
not just to build stone houses. This is the rejection of the past that flows through the heart of Dalit politics and identity. Dassel says such exploitation will no longer be tolerated. The first paragraph the first stanza opens with a very potent image of how the stonemasons give dreams to stones. From their raw form, these stones can aspire to gain importance at the hands of these masons. By mentioning his decision to follow his father and become a stonemason, the speaker draws our attention to his own dream. The speaker adores his father and might have cherished the dream of being a stonemason from his childhood. His father, the stonemason, has not only given dreams to stones but also to him. The speaker is inspired to become a stonemason, seeing the craftsmanship of the father. But the people close to him are shocked at this revelation as he compares his declaration as setting match to fireworks. They advise the speaker not to pursue the father's profession. The reader gets the message that this profession is not a desirable one. Nevertheless, the speaker literally steps into his father's life of toil and hardship. The line which tells of him scratching the elbow and armpits of his father gives an image of how much he cared for him and how closely he shares the father's experience right from his childhood. The second stanza opens with a line full of possibilities. How can stonemasons give stones flowers? If the stone is made into an idol of a god, then it will be offered flowers. Another instance is when the stone becomes a tombstone of a dead person. Then again the stone will get flowers. The second interpretation is possible as in the later lines we get the picture of the Parsi Tower of Silence in Malabar Hill, Mumbai, where the Parsis dispose of their dead. This structure is of great cultural significance. The Parsis did not believe in burying or burning their dead. There are vultures in the tower which eat the carcass. The customs have changed and many are now buried in graves. In any case, the speaker is proud of his father's creation. Maybe the stones used for the tower and has been made by this stonemason and is proudly declaring them to the people. Playing horns and trumpets might mean that he is declaring this. Uh, he is proud that this, this particular person who is his father has maybe uh, created these stones. He sees women bowed in prayer next to a Parsi turned to stone. This is this Parsi turned to stone is it refers to the figures carved on the tower. His father must have carved those stones which are now being revered. The speaker is recollecting those wonderful memories. His romantic image of the stonemason has however faded as he has seen the realities, rather experienced the realities. He now remembers his father's dead body. Rump means the hindsight of an animal. This is a reference to the state of his father's body at the time of his death. Due to the hard nature of the work, his father is no more. The mention of chaos of the dark and bloodied rump could also suggest that his father was probably beaten to death as a victim of caste oppression and the son is recollecting those horrifying episodes. His father in any case has died a horrifying death and his body is compared to the carcass of a slaughtered animal. He burns his fingers smoking cheroot. It's a variety of cigarette. 
getting lost in his memories very dark and painful memories in the third paragraph in the third stanza rather the speaker tells that the stone masons inseminate or impregnate stones the stone masons give their energy a part of themselves to the stones to help them realize their true potential the speaker then sees exhausted horses they are tired after pulling the carts the speaker tries to pull one this could be interpreted as the son who is trying to do the exhausted father's job he has been pulling the cart of life and caring for the family but now the father is tired like the horses and as we are later informed dead he squeezed every ounce of his life into those stones until there was nothing left the speaker cremates his father the last line i burn very poignantly painfully presents the pain of the son on losing his father it's not the corpse but the living son who is really burning the final stanza informs us how the stone masons put in their life blood into this difficult task of breaking stones their entire life is sacrificed in giving life to the stones the speaker now carries a load of stones figuratively it could refer to the burden of his family and other responsibilities or even caste oppression the insults the hurt of the insults that he is carrying the tone changes at the end as the speaker informs the reader that the stone masons built stone houses but the speaker now tells he breaks heads with the stones the poet or rather the activist persona of the speaker comes out as he separates his identity from that of being the child of the stone mason the last line is a warning to people who mistreat the dalits he tells the readers that if people abuse them they could get seriously hurt the speaker might be hinting at the fact that he could hurt the wrong doers through his art his poem being the spearhead of the revolutionary dalit panthers the warning could be interpreted as being both literal and figurative the life of the stone mason symbolically portrays the life of the dalits undergoing mistreatment in a caste ridden society such injustices are no longer going to be tolerated says the new generation dasal ends the poem on a note of violent reaction to caste oppression varkita endaru evam pulliyana eta pulli ennu orna verum pulli alla ore